Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a go-to technique in international finance to estimate and make sense of yield curves in their various shapes and sizes, which is the Nelson and Siegel 1987 model, which is the foundational, the most commonly used model to um, estimate yield curve shapes based on real world bond data. And today we'll estimate the yield curve for UK government debt based on 10 tenors, 10 maturities, starting from one year all the way to 10 years, of UK guilt, and we extracted the coupons and the relevant market prices uh, for uh, guilds of these maturities from MarketWatch, which is the easiest free source to use for such an application to extract uh, government uh, yields, coupons, or prices of these bonds for a wide range of maturities. You obviously can use Nelson Siegel to estimate uh, yield curves for something like uh, corporate debt, which is most important for credit risk implications or uh, applications of Nelson and Siegel to um, risk estimations, risk management uh, for corporate debt. Uh, obviously, we are applying it to sovereign debt here, and you can even use it to estimate something like the interbank offer rate yield curves. But we stick with UK government bonds for now, but the application is quite uh, similar no matter what underlying asset are you using for the yield curve estimation. The mathematics of the Nelson and Siegel model is quite simple and it takes into account three parameters, beta naught, beta one, and beta two, that correspond to the level, the long term value of the uh, interest rates, uh, the slope of the yield curve. You can allow your yield curve to be more or less steep, uh, normal, upward sloping or inverted, downward sloping, by varying this parameter beta one. And you can also make your yield curve humped that is, uh, it can have a maximum uh, at a particular maturity, it can be humped, or it can even be U-shaped if you vary the parameter beta 2. As well as, we can introduce a decay parameter, lambda, and here we model it as an exponential decay in this function over here that Nelson and Siegel proposed and derived. And this particular functional form might be familiar to those of you who ever modeled something using an exponential distribution function. The logic here is very similar. And this decay parameter will allow us to um, model a very flexible range of um, shapes and make our hump, judging by the shape parameter, to occur at various maturities, at various tenors. And first, what we'll do is we'll uh, start with a baseline specification for those parameters and estimate the yield curve here. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is that our lambda parameter cannot be zero, as that would introduce division by zero and errors into our estimation. But as we put our starting value of at one, this shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. So first, we take into account the beta naught, the long-term level of interest rates or yields, uh, not forgetting to lock uh, all those three parameters plus lambda and unlocking the maturity, the tenor parameter, whenever we introduce that. Then we take into account the slope, adding a lock adding a locked uh, beta one parameter and multiplying it by one minus the exponent of negative lambda times t, the maturity or the tenor. Then we divide it by lambda times t, again, just as in the um, any exponential decay modeling. Then we add the term that is responsible for curvature or hump yield curves. And then we take into account the parentheses. Again, making sure that we close the parentheses uh, appropriately. And finally, the exponential term to close our brackets. If we double right click it all the way down, we'll have a quite unremarkable yield curve with interest rates equal zero throughout. If we vary our level parameter, for example, make it equal to 5%,
will get a flat yield curve, 5%, all the way through. Then if we play around with the slope parameter, for example, make it positive, 0.01, we'll get an inverted yield curve that starts at a higher value and then slowly relaxes to 5% as maturities increase. So again, this reinforces the meaning of B0 as the long-term value of yields or interest rates. If the slope parameter is negative, though, then we'll have a normal-shaped yield curve that slowly converges to the long-term value of 5%. And the higher it is, so for example, if it's not minus 0.001, but minus 0.02, we'll have an even steeper curve. And if we do minus 0.05, we can uh, quite visibly see how steep it becomes. If, on the other hand, we vary the shape parameter, make it positive, for example, 0.01, we'll see that our yield curve becomes humped and it generates, um, well, an inverted U-shape uh, here and here lambda uh, comes into picture so if we in increase the value of lambda to for example 10 uh, our hump will be much earlier and if we reduce it to 0 0.1 for example our hump will be occurring at uh, long-term maturities and if we change this shape to a negative value then we'll have a u-shaped uh, curve with an inverse hump of sorts but let's get back to our initial specification and uh, think about how can we actually estimate those parameters to produce the best fit for the real-world uh, data on gilts that we have obtained. To do that, we need to uh, estimate the deviation, the mispricing of our um, bonds uh, from their market values. So we'll use our yield curve generated by Nelson-Siegel equation, those parameters, to value each of those bonds, and then we'll produce a mispricing value, so basically deviations of bond values from the market prices that we'll seek to minimize by varying those parameters, and that would uh, generate a best-fitting yield curve. Here we have got 10 bonds, so 10 uh, degrees of freedom of sorts, and four parameters, so our model will not be an exact fit, but it will smoothen out some short-term disturbances that might affect the discrepancies and yields between those government bonds of different tenors. So you'll have a very smooth yield curve, but that would reflect the economic information that is contained in uh, prices of those uh, government bonds, or corporate bonds if you're using those. So first, to value all of them, we need to keep in mind that by default, the uh, principle of any uh, UK government bond is 100, and again, most bonds uh, conform to this. So we can first introduce the uh, discounted cash flow value for the principal, so 100 divided by 1 plus the relevant yield, so for the uh, one year bond we're using the one year yield here, and then we raise it to the power of this bond's maturity. As we drag it down this will correctly account for the yield of a relevant maturity, and then we need to take into account the uh, coupon contribution to the present value of those uh, cash flow streams. So we sum our coupon that should be divided by 1 plus the relevant yield. Again, this yield will change depending on maturity um, correctly reflecting the yield curve that we seek to model. And then we need to raise it to the power of the uh, maturity streams. So basically, we'll first introduce the A7 cell and we'll lock it. And then we'll introduce the unlocked A7 cell, so when we drag it down, we're referring to a longer and longer stream of maturities to correctly discount coupons that are payable at various points in time, given our different maturities on our 10 bonds. And that produces evaluations for all 10 of our bonds. We can see, for example, an 8-year bond refers correctly to an 8-year coupon, 8-year yield, and a stream of coupons payable 1 through 8. Here we assume annual coupons. You can generate a modified version of this template for uh, semi-annual or quarterly coupons, but that would not affect the results materially. However, if you would like to do it very precisely, this could be the way to go. But we are concerned with minimizing our mispricing, so we are introducing a sum squared of prices and our estimated values, given the yield curve Nelson Siegel model produces. And this is a quantity of deviation from real-world yields that we seek to minimize. So we go to Solver, 
and specify our task. So we minimize our mispricing by changing our four parameters. And we, uh, given the fact that our slopes and shapes can be uh, well inverted, normal, we can have a hump or we can have a U shape, let's untick that to allow the parameters to take any values whatsoever and click solve. And that produces a very plausible shape of the yield curve. We have got um, a very minor hump that occurs quite early on in the maturity uh, structure, around one to two years. Here you can see the um, shape does not take off uh, immediately. It is slightly flat to start with, and then it becomes positive, and it converges to a long-term value of 4.22%, as we can see by looking at the longer-term yields. So if we change this yield to, for example, a 100-year yield, you can see how much closer to 4.22%, the long-term value, it uh, goes. Uh, another specification of the Nelson and Siegel model might involve locking your lambda parameter to reflect the fact, uh, do you believe your hump should be long-term or short-term? That's what Nelson and Siegel themselves um, argue for. So if we lock our lambda parameter at, um, so let's say, 10, we might want to solve by changing only the three beta parameters, beta naught, beta 1, and beta 2. And let's see what sort of a fit it produces. And you can see that given the fact that this sort of model cannot produce a hump or an inverted U-shape early on, we have got a much more upward sloping curve with much lower short-term yields. However, this is not uh, that closely matching what is occurring in reality because we are only um, changing three parameters here instead of uh, four parameters. So this is the way to uh, model uh, the Nelson and Siegel yield curve with uh, various parameters being changed. Another quite common restriction to put on the Nelson and Siegel model is for the yields to be uh, non-negative, especially the uh, short-term yield, the one-year yield, for example. So that uh, would involve you adding a constraint on this yield to be non-negative. Sometimes, especially for corporate bond modeling, you can also introduce an additional constraint so that the uh, yields are non-negative. This is very relevant for corporate bond yield modeling, but less relevant for government bond yield modeling, as those can go negative sometimes. But even here, um, we can apply this sort of constraint, but we can see that although um, this constraint can be applied, uh, the maturity uh, one yield and all the yields after that are still non-negative, so this is something that is not necessary for this particular application. Um, and uh, we can see how various uh, specifications, uh, given uh, whether you get lambda fixed or whether you vary all four parameters, uh, can generate uh, various sorts of yield curves that still produce a decent fit with your uh, data. Uh, please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any first suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. If this video collects enough likes, we'll uh, cover the Nelson, Siegel, and Swenson model, the extension with extra two parameters that allows you to model yield curves even better in the future. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.